We mentioned Conor Gallagher heading off out to Madrid. It looks like he will join Atletico. Danny, the new man in charge at Chelsea, Enzo Maresca, has been speaking. Um, is he right in this? Financial rules, are they damaging football academies and a kid's pathway to the first team? Are they indeed forcing clubs to sell promising talent for pure profit? This is Maresca's take. This is not Chelsea's problem. This is the rules problems. All the clubs in this moment, they are almost compulsory to sell players from the academy because of the rules but it's not Chelsea problem it's all the Premier League club problem and I also think that the intention of the club is not to sell players from the academy but it's the rules that at the end you have to do it but it's not also only for us it's for all the Premier League club and it's a shame because in Italy we are I don't know Totti with Roma he was 20 years with the same club I, I love that we all love that in football and the fans, they love that because they want to see them in that player. But uh, because of the rules, probably something uh, is, is now it's different from compared to the past. So do they need to change the rules? If they need to change the rules, if we want to protect academy players, probably yes. Now, I was going to ask Danny, but I turned to you and you're pulling your face give and saying things like, give me a break. Whatever you haven't got is the reasons why there's some sort of problem. Maybe if managers and owners didn't spend money like drunken sailors on players, they wouldn't need to sell academy players. Absolutely. And by the way, this observation that somehow it's damaging academies, what a lot of old cobblers. The pro the, 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 is it? The, the motivation of an academy is to produce professional footballers, to give them a career. That doesn't mean that career happens to be at the football club where the academies develop them. It means that if indeed young players are not able to find their way into the first team, because most of the time the managers won't trust the young players to be able to play in the first team anyway. So why this is an issue, I don't know. Yeah, but you produce young uh, academy graduates at Palace yeah, and in, in the hope that they would eventually play sure. for the Palace first team. Yeah, so then, not that they'll play for somebody else. And, and the reality of it is, if, if that indeed... But the, the framing of the conversation is it's damaging academies. How's it damaging academies? Well, I'll tell you but, how. Chelsea Academy graduates sold since 2021. Lewis Hall, Livramento, Gehi, yeah. Tomori, Loftus-Cheek, Gallagher, Mount... Hudson Adoy, Mats and Tammy Abraham. Are they all playing? Shows you how well it's are, they all playing? Playing? Are, are they all playing then? They're all making a football. fortune being no, they, why, why aren't they playing so, for so, Chelsea? So because Chelsea have sold them to other football clubs. But the point is the, that the framing of the question is probably wrong. Is it damaging a football club rather than damaging academy football? Because academy football is a cost implication that's quite a significant one. If it's producing young players of a talent that are either getting into the first team of Chelsea or being sold to other football clubs, which, by the way, Man United were doing 25 years ago. Anyone that came out of their, out of their youth development, stuck in the first team, a couple of games for Man United, Man United player, five million quid. Right? That was, that's been a model for a long time. So the idea that it's damaging academies is a load of old codswallop because what's, what academies are supposed to do is produce young players. In an ideal world for the first team, then you have this row with football managers about, can I have my young players in the first team? Oh, no, no, I need to get higher up the league. You can't trust young kids, they need to be developed. Well, well, hang on a second, you either want the young players or you don't. No, what I want is it all. I want a butter mountain of £100 million players and I want a butter mountain of young players when it suits me. And if I haven't got one or the other, then that's the reasons why I've got a problem. But and Simon, also, and Simon, also, is it not also, the case at the moment that young also, players are being sold to, sold to help the club so get around financial fair and play? That's also but their that's own, their own academy, is it? No, and it's also mismanagement because what they're doing is, Chelsea for is one example we were talking about, they're bringing in a load of young talent from different areas of the world and paying stupid amounts of money and putting them on inflated wages and then where their own young players who are playing ahead of those players or playing better than those players are being represented and being advised to go to them and say, actually, give me the same as what you're giving them they won't do it. No, but Danny, Marek's so, point the, is that clubs like Chelsea and others are being compelled to sell the young players. Only by their own mismanagement of, of recruitment and money. Only by their own stupidity in the transfer market. Or, because or, surely or, you have a balance. Or, or the lack of opportunities in terms of somebody. It's not all about the club being compelled to sell them. Let's get the Conor Gallagher situation right. right? Conor Gallagher's been offered two contracts during the course of this summer at Chelsea and has decided not to take either one of them because he's not going to be a first-team footballer as far as the new coach is concerned. So it's not all about punting Gallagher out the door. It was all about the reality of Conor Gallagher's got a year left on his contract. These players wanted Bosman rulings. They wanted contracts that actually enabled them to have freedom of movement. So it, has, it comes with a consequence attached to it. That ultimately, when you come down to a year and you're left on your contract, football clubs are going to look at it as a commercial decision around finances rather than a footballing decision around talent at times, because that's the nature of the way the industry's gone. Like it, loathe it, it's a reality. Now, the idea that the, the, the objective of an academy such as Chelsea is, is to punt out players from their academy to be able to finance the mistakes of the first team you can find some context in that and, and, and probably there is some elements of that that are absolutely right but by the same token this is a football club that about five years ago was sanctioned by UEFA for, for, for having a 
boatload of players that were brought into their environment under inducements to their parents and to people around them to get all the best young players in the world into their academy. There has to be a balance between the two. And, and I don't see the characterization of this question as particularly clever because the academy system isn't broken. It isn't not working. It's just one football club or a couple of football clubs are having to make commercial decisions around players that, to me, well, you know, I don't think Conor Gallagher is a world beater. I think he's average. All right, but, okay. but your favourite people agents have been speaking out. They've accused clubs of double standards, citing two of the biggest deals this summer, Gallica and Lenny Yoro. Uh, agents have told The Telegraph that in these circumstances, pressure was piled on players to move before the end of their contracts by the clubs. It's not a case of agents talking about the, the loyalty. No one signs a contract in this day and age with a real expectation that they're going to come to the end of that contract without either a new contract being put into place or something that involves either a player wanting to leave or the club saying, "You're not. You, there's no place for you here anymore. And if you want to be obstinate, you want to be a dog in a manger and just sit here picking up your money, then the club are going to be a little bit less tolerant of that and say well I think you should be moving along Danny how, how much of a, a loss will Conor Gallagher be to Chelsea yeah it'd be a loss um, although he's you could argue if Chelsea want to win the Premier League again he, he might not be in the team the reality is with where they're at and what they've got he's one of the few players who you can rely on physically um, in the middle of the park to get about and do the job he's been a captain he's resilient he's durable He's got a goal in him. He's a good player. He's not a world beater. Simon's right. But in their predicament at the moment, he would have been a valuable asset. But he didn't want to stay. No, I know. So, so I'm, I'm not, but Simon, would they be selling him if FFP didn't re exist? Well, he didn't want to sell him. They offered him two new contracts. They offered him a contract. They, the new owners offered him a contract in November 2022, and they've offered him two new contracts in this summer. The coach has come in and said, there's no guarantee that you're going to be a first-team player in the style of football that we apparently are going to play, whatever mm. that is. Yeah, but maybe Winning they didn't offer Connor some of the contracts have been thrown out of late. Well, they probably like, didn't, but you have, to, you have to understand where you are maybe, in the pecking order. Maybe, but also also the reality of it is, is, is that, you know, just because you've offered other players contracts doesn't mean that everyone... This is not socialism. Everyone doesn't get the same contract. No, exactly. You know, so Connor Gallagher's worth to Chelsea... And, uh, and the narrative has been whipped up. Idiot plaid-wearing American owners that are spending far too much money are selling Academy products. Right? And it's always been the way that Academy players... Manchester City have sold Academy players because they didn't want to wait to get into the first team. Jadon Sancho was sold into, into... They're still selling them. And they're still selling them now. Mm. So with that in mind, it depends what, what narrative you want to run. Chelsea need to win on the field. If they win on the field, whoever they sell out of the Academy matter, will no. be a moot point. It's like when Mason Mount... Mason Mount was actually before he left, was obviously well-loved and liked by the Chelsea yeah, fans you, yeah. and playing really well. The reason he was able to turn the contract down is because he had an offer from Man United that was much more than he was being offered at Chelsea. How is Mason? He's your favourite player, isn't he? Well, I hope he's fit and has a good season, but that's irrelevant to what we're talking about. The reality I, mean, I think, you know, the appalling nature of Birmingham situation where, you know, ultimately the degradation of that football club by the fact that they sold an academy product like Jude Bellingham, they should be held accountable for it. Their academy's broken, their thinking is broken, everything about football is broken on that basis. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.